In this example, we compute the Fourier series for the step function on the interval from minus pi to pi. So in particular, we're looking at the, the heavy side or unit step function, which is equal to 1 for positive or non-negative values and 0 for, for negative values. So let's see. The um, coefficient a0 for the constant term is going to be 1 over pi times the integral from minus pi pi of fx dx, which for our function, uh, since the integrand is equal to 0 on the uh, negative portion, it has the effect of truncating the domain to be an integral from 0 to pi. And so when we work that out, we just get a coefficient of 1. Then if we look at uh, uh, in general, a n for n larger than 0. Th this is going to be 1 over pi integral from minus pi to pi fx. And now instead of cosine 0x, we have to have a cosine nx dx term. And so again, this is going to have the effect of just uh, truncating the domain to be from 0 to pi. And then you can work out this integral. And you end up with 1 over n pi times sine nx evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals pi, which is 0, because sine is equal to 0 at both ends of that interval. And if we look at the bn coefficients, we see something similar, at least in terms of the setup. And it's just the integral fx sine nx dx and then when we integrate the sine we get something which is uh, not just the um, uh, equal to zero at both ends of the interval um, and we get 1 minus negative 1 to the n over n pi. OK. And so the reason for that is I'm, I'm using the fact that if you look at cosine nx, so what does it look like? Let me draw some ham-handed sketch here. So here's 0. And so the cosine function goes like this. Well. Aside from not being vertically centered, that didn't come out too bad. Yeah. OK. Um, so here we've got 2 pi. Here we've got 4 pi. There's worth making complete cycles. So this is going to be pi, and this is going to be 3 pi, the odd powers, or the odd uh, multiples. And so we go from 1 to minus 1 to 1 to minus 1 to 1 to minus 1, et cetera. So um, you can see that this is going to be um, minus 1 to the n. OK, that handy little conversion will uh, be used again and again. So it's a good one to remember. Um, <coughs> OK, so putting this all together again, let's see. This tells us that um, f has a Fourier series of uh, 1 half plus, and then we've got the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus negative 1 to the n over n pi, which is, or sorry, times, that's the coefficient of sine nx. And if we write out what these things look like, so here's just a couple more forms that you might see uh, an answer to something like this uh, written in. So notice that the, uh, the ones with odd n are the only ones that survive. The even n's drop out. So we have, uh, whoops, sine x plus 1 third sine 3x plus 1 fifth sine 5x and so forth. And there's a lot of little things uh, with parity like this. And as a consequence, notations have been designed to exploit that. So you might see this written as um, 1 half plus um, 2 over pi times the sum n equals 1 to infinity of uh, sine 
nx over n, where n is odd. So that extra annotation under the, uh, the, the summation sign just indicates that um, it's only odd values of n. Um, and sometimes it's made explicit that there's only odd numbers involved in the sum by changing from n to 2k plus 1. So if we have k equals 0 to infinity sine 2k plus 1 x over 2k plus 1. Uh, different people have different preferences, so I'll leave that one up to you. Uh, but before we move on, let's take a, a closer look at why um, this, this thing happened where all the ANs except for the first one dropped out to give 0. OK, so let's look at what this uh, plots out like. So I've got two plots of the same, the same view. Each one of these is the number of um, is, uh, a Fourier, sorry, is a Fourier polynomial approximation to the function that, that we are looking at. So, uh, and I've, I've plotted them in order. So, so there's the first one, for example, which you can see in yellow here at the beginning, and it comes up like this. So this is at position one. And then moving down the axis along here uh, from 1 to 2. Then the next one you can see has a couple more bounces and comes up and so on and so forth. Um, and so they're all arranged. And you can see that the higher polynomials, like the one here at the end, is getting very, uh, there's a bunch of little close wigglies and then jumps and then a number, a number of little close wigglies. But for the most part, it's pretty darn close to that step function that, that we're looking at. Uh, and there's a bunch of interesting things that you can kind of see from looking at this picture. So I've, I've drawn that uh, again over here, seeing sort of more from the right. So you can kind of uh, see the separation between the different plots a little bit better. And there in the background, maybe you can get a clearer view of the one that's uh, getting closer to being the, the step function. So you notice that at the discontinuity here, this is interesting, all, all of these uh, graphs pass through the point at height 1 half. They also do the same thing over here and over here. And you can see, and this should probably be intuitive because sine functions are periodic functions, that um, this thing looks like if we were to extend it uh, off to the left, it would, con it would continue on in a periodic fashion that way, and it would continue on in a periodic fashion this way, coming over to the right as well. Um, so, so let's take a look at this question of why um, a n is equal to 0 for n greater than or equal to 1. Well, if we look at what happens for f minus 1 half, so 1 half, that's the a0 term there. Um, what does it look like? Well, so we went from the function uh, that looked like um, you know, 0 here and then 1 here. And if we subtract 1 half from it, then the resulting thing is going to be at height 1 half here. And it's going to be at height 1 here. Um, this function is an odd function, right? So it looks symmetric around the origin. I mean, with the, you know, excusing this one particular point right here, the rest of this is an odd function. And so what happens then is that that means that uh, f minus 1 half is going to be some collection of, of odd functions, namely sines, uh, because it's going to be orthogonal to everything, anything even. And so just to see what I mean by that, suppose if you have f as an even function, g as an odd function, and then you integrate on any symmetric interval, so let's say from minus l to l, fx times gx dx. Well, from what we know uh, about even and odd functions, f times g, if f is even and g is odd, that is an odd function. And if you integrate an odd function over a symmetric interval, you get 0. So this tells us then, because we can interpret this one over here, 
as being the inner product between f and g, that tells us that odd functions are always orthogonal to even functions. And so in particular, the coefficients for the signs are all going to be 0 if your function's even. And the coefficient for co the cosine terms are all going to be 0 if your function is an odd function. Um, the other thing that I wanted to note about this example before we leave it is that going back to the picture, we saw that the Fourier series um, for f, if we evaluate it at 0, we get um, <coughs> 1 half of the right-hand limit of f at 0 plus the left-hand limit of f at 0. So in other words, I mean, uh, this one right here is the value of f as you approach 0 from the right-hand side. And this one here is the value of f as you approach 0 from the left-hand side, from the negative side. right? So in other words, the value of the Fourier series is the halfway point of the jump. Right? It's, it's, it's the midpoint of the vertical jump. We get 1 half, which is the same thing as 1 half of the upper limiting value of 1 from above the discontinuity, plus the lower limiting value of 0 from below the discontinuity. And so the key point here is that the um, Fourier series for f at 0, which is a half, is not equal to the Fourier series, or the value of the, the function itself at 0. So this brings up the question, um, what does it really mean to say that uh, the Fourier series of f converges to f.